Hello, word nerds. Welcome to the dictionary. I don't know if you can hear that. Oh, yeah. I bet you can hear that. Uh, So just about 15 or 20 minutes ago, um, CNN called it for Biden. Uh, Obviously, this episode isn't airing until almost Thanksgiving, November 25th. But I am recording this on Saturday, November 7th. 2020 and uh it looks like we just got some big big news so yeah there are people driving down the street honking their horns yelling it's fun it's gonna be a fun episode uh wow people are really screaming out there okay um maybe that was a dog i can't tell the first word for this episode is burrito b-u-r-r-i-t-o this is a noun from 1934 A flour tortilla rolled or folded around a filling as of meat, beans, and cheese. I could really go for a burrito right now. This is from Spanish, which means little donkey, which is a diminutive of burro, B-U-R-R-O, which is actually our next word. Uh, But hold on a second. Why are they calling a burrito a burrito? Why is this food uh, called a little donkey? I think that's very funny, and uh, maybe I'll see if I can find out uh, a little bit more information on why it was named burrito. Next, we have burro, B-U-R-R-O, noun from 1775, and we just have the synonym donkey, especially a small one used as a pack animal. And uh, it's from Latin buricos, or uh, buricus, which means small horse. Next, we have burrow, B-U-R-R-O-W, first form, noun from the 13th century, a hole or excavation in the ground made by an animal as a rabbit for shelter and habitation. Now we have the second form of burrow. This is a verb from 1602, starting with transitive. Number one is archaic, to hide in or as if in a burrow, to a to construct by tunneling. And all the horn honking stopped. It'll probably start up again. To be, to penetrate by means of a burrow. Three, to make a motion suggestive of burrowing with. And a synonym is nestle, as in burrows her hand into mine. My cats like to sort of burrow, it feels like, into just whatever tiny little space they can. Uh, when I used to let them into my bedroom when I would sleep, one of my cats every single night would curl up in my arm. She was making a little burrow between my side and my arm. And uh, it was very nice, uh, but I also slept terribly, so we don't do that anymore. Uh, let's see. That was, that was uh, where were we? Nestle. Okay, now we have the intransitive definitions number one. To conceal oneself oneself in or as if in a burrow. To A, to make a burrow. To B, to progress by or as if by digging. Three, to make a motion suggestive of burrowing. Synonyms are snuggle and nestle. As in, burrowed against his back for warmth. And burrower is a noun. Next we have burrowing owl. Uh, I think we can probably guess where this is going. Noun from 1823. A small, diurnal, chiefly ground-dwelling American owl of grassland and desert regions that's, that roots and nests in burrows. It's so funny to think of birds living in the ground, uh, or burrows, whatever, but, I mean, there definitely are. Um, you know, in, in the grasslands and deserts, there aren't so many trees for them to perch in and live up in the trees. So, uh, so they, they figured out a way they live in the ground instead, even though they are flying animals. So diurnal, I'm not sure what that means. D I U R N A L. Um, I'm, I'm guessing that means two of some kind diurnal, like, uh, maybe they are awake during the day and the night. Yeah. Oh, people are setting off fireworks. Um, Because nocturnal would be they're awake at night. And then uh, I don't remember the term for awake during the day. Man, these fireworks are distracting. But yay. Uh, So diurnal, I think, just means that they're awake day and night. And then the scientific name is Athene cunicularia. Should I just go out in the street and party with everybody? 
No, I must read the dictionary. Okay, next is bury. Adjective from the 15th century. One, containing burrs. Number two, synonym is prickly. Number three is talking about speech, so when we talk. And it just says, characterized by a burr. Oh, and that, I think, is the Scottish burr. Uh, Next, we have bursa, noun from 1803. A bodily pouch or sack as a... A small serous sack between a tendon and a bone. That sounds like it probably shouldn't be there. Maybe not. Maybe it's normal. I don't know. Serous is S-E-R-O-U-S. It's like serious without the I. Uh, and then we have B. The synonym is Bursa of Fabricius. And the only reason I know how to pronounce that word is because it is the next one and I already looked at it ahead of time. And then Bursal is an adjective... Um, So this is from um, Middle Latin. It means bag or purse, and there's more at the word purse. So here we go with Bursa of Fabricius. Uh, That is spelled capital F-A-B-R-I-C-I-U-S. This is a... It it doesn't say what it is. It's not, not a noun. I mean, I assume it's a noun. It doesn't say, but it is from 1945 a lymphoid organ that opens into the cloaca of birds and functions in B-cell production. And this is from Johann C. Fabricius, who was a Danish entomologist who died in 1808. And who, uh, if you don't know, cloaca, um, a lot of animals have these. Uh, They are just... um, uh, The easy definition, I mean, we'll get into it in the seas. Uh, Well, you know what, let's just wait. If you want to learn what it is before that, You can go look it up. Otherwise, you can sit patiently for about six to eight months. Uh, Okay, where were we? Next, we have Berser or Bersar, noun from the 13th century. An officer, as of a monastery or college, in charge of funds. And a synonym is treasurer. So it's just a fancier way or just a different way to say treasurer. Next, we have Bersary. Uh, This is a noun from 1695. One, the treasury of a college or monastery. Number two is British, a monetary grant to a needy student. And a synonym is scholarship. Yeah, this definitely seems more like a word that they would say in, uh, in the UK than in America. But I'm sure Americans use it too. Next we have burse. It's like a purse with a B noun from the 15th century. 1A, we just have the synonym purse. Funny that that should happen that way. Um, And then if obviously if we look back to bursa, which was the the sack or the pouch, um, that comes from the word purse. So it's, I guess, not surprising that they are similar. Um, And then we have 1B, a square cloth case used to carry the corporal in a communion service. Number two is obsolete. Synonyms are exchange and bourse, B-O-U-R-S-E. Don't remember how to pronounce that one. Uh, Okay, next we have bursitis. Noun from 1857. Inflammation of a bursa as of the shoulder or elbow. Maybe I got a inflammation of the bursa. I don't know. Uh, And then here we go with the last word. It is burst. B-U-R-S-T. First form. Verb from before the 12th century. Second form will be in the next episode. Uh, okay, burst. It uh, the number one to break open, apart, or into pieces, usually from impact or from pressure from within. Number two a, to give way from an excess of emotion, as in my heart will burst. Two b, to give vent suddenly to a repressed emotion, as in burst into tears. Also, as in burst out laughing. I prefer the latter but the former is also important uh, for all of us. 3A, to emerge or spring suddenly, as in burst out of the house, also as in burst onto the scene. 3B, synonyms are launch and plunge, as in burst into song. No, I'm not going to burst into song because that would be insane. Number four, to be filled to the breaking point, as in bursting with excitement, also is in a crate bursting with fruit. Oh, so those were all intransitive. 
Sorry, I didn't say that before. And then now we have transitive. Number one, to cause, to burst, as in burst a balloon. 2A, to force open, as a door or a way, by strong or vigorous action. 2B, to flood over, as in the river burst its banks. Number three, to produce by or as if by bursting. And then we have one phrase, burst at the seams, which means to be larger, fuller, or more crowded than could reasonably have been anticipated. I have been on the train in Chicago where it was bursting at the seams because I don't think you could have really fit any more people unless you laid them across the top of the people who were already standing. Uh, it was not, not fun times. I don't think I ever want to do that again. So we had burrito, burrow, burrow, burrowing owl, burry, bursa, bursa of Fabricius, burser, bursary, burst, bursitis, and burst. Well, I have to pick burrito as the word of the episode. Um, I, yeah, I would love a burrito right now. Thank you very much. And until next time, this is Spencer dispensing information on this very momentous day. Uh, what What is today? November 7th. Um, it's going to be interesting to see how this changes things, how the next many years go. Uh, I like to keep my emotions relatively in check because, uh, you know, it's things are going to get great and things are going to get terrible and it just is just going to be that way. Um, that's just what I've learned in my 40 years of life. Uh, so right now, things are good. Let's, let's keep it that way for as long as we can. At least that's my opinion. Obviously, other people disagree. I'd love to have a conversation with them. Thank you and goodbye. Hello, word nerds. Welcome to the dictionary. I am still recording this uh, mere minutes after a decision seems to have been made. Uh, we'll see what happens with recounts and stuff, but I feel I have a, I have a pretty good feeling it's going to stick. Uh, so, yeah, you still might hear some horns honking and fireworks blasting, and who knows what else the people are going to do. Uh, okay, so the first word is the second form of burst, noun from 1610, 1A, a sudden outbreak, especially a vehement outburst as of emotion. 1B, uh, so I bet a lot of people are feeling that right now. 1B, synonyms are explosion and eruption. 1C, a sudden intense effort, as in a burst of speed. 1D, the duration of fire in one engagement of the mechanism of an automatic firearm. Number two, an act of bursting. Three, a result of bursting, especially a visible puff accompanying the explosion of a shell. Next, we have burster, noun from 1611. One, one that bursts. Two, the celestial source of an outburst of radiation as x-rays. Next is burthen, B-U-R-T-H-E-N. This is an archaic variation of the word burden, B-U-R-D-E-N. Uh, yeah, it seems like they used to use a lot, of, lot more THs back in the day than we do now. Uh, next, we have burweed, noun from circa 1783. Any of various plants as a cocklebur or burdock having burry fruit. I, cockleburr and burdock. Burdock, I think we probably read that recently, uh, but cockleburr we'll get to later. Next, we have the word berry, B-U-R-Y. Uh, it sounds like the berry that you would eat. I just learned recently that pumpkins are berries. Did I talk? I think I, I must have talked about that. I don't know. Uh, okay, so this one is a verb from before the 12th century. We are starting with, actually, is it only? Yeah, I think it's only transitive, which I guess makes sense when you think about the word. So, number one, to dispose of by depositing in or as if in the earth, especially to inter with funeral ceremonies. 2A, to conceal by or as if by covering with earth. 2B, to cover from view, as in buried her face in her hands. 3A, to have done with as in burying their differences. 3b, to conceal in obscurity, as in buried the retraction among the classified ads. Hmm. Uh, 3c, synonyms are submerge and engross, 
and that is usually used with the word in, as in buried himself in his books. I am buried in this book. Uh, number four, to put out to put out of play by placing it in or under the dealer's pack. And then the example is a playing card. To, so to put a playing card out of play by placing it in or under the dealer's pack. Number five, to succeed emphatically or impressively in making a shot. A shot is in parentheses. Uh, it's a weird way to end the sentence, though. Uh, emphatically or impressively in making. In making what? Um, as in, bury a jumper. Also as in, bury a putt. That's golf. Number six, to defeat overwhelmingly. And then a synonym for everything is the word hide. Phrase, bury the hatchet. To settle a disagreement or become reconciled. Uh, let's look at the etymology. It is from uh, Old High German Bergon, which means to shelter. Uh, from Russian berek, which means to spare. Next, we have burying beetle. Two words. Is the beetle getting buried or is the beetle burying stuff? This is a noun from 1818. Any of various beetles that bury and lay eggs on the carcasses of small animals which provide a food source for the developing larva or larvae. The family name is Sylphidae, and especially the genus name Necrophorus. So, oh, yes, yeah, so, uh, they, you know, they, they find some uh, dead animals, which become food for many, many things, which is what all of us are probably going to be. And, uh, you know, they, they, when the eggs hatch, they have this food source right there so that they can start eating and get big and grow and then start the cycle all over again. Next is the word bus, B-U-S, first form, noun from circa 1909. Number one, A, a large motor vehicle designed to carry passengers usually along a fixed route according to a schedule. One B, we have the synonym automobile. Number two, a small hand truck. Three A, synonym is bus bar. Well, we'll get that, we'll get to that uh, in a few words. Uh, 3B, a set of parallel conductors in a computer system that forms a main transmission path. Number four, a spacecraft or missile that carries one or more detachable devices as warheads. Uh, so this is, uh, the etymology just says it's short for the word omnibus, O-M-N-I-B-U-S. So uh, I'm curious why they named it that in the first place, maybe? Uh, will that word be in the dictionary? Probably. Uh, so yeah, I think that's kind of interesting. I think when you when you go take the bus, you should say, I'm going to go take the omnibus. Uh, now we have the second form of bus. This is a verb from circa 1909. First is intransitive. One, to travel by bus. Two, to work as a bus boy. And now transitive. One, to transport by bus. Two A, we have the 4D definition for the word clear, as in bus dishes. 2B, to remove dirty dishes from, as in bus tables. I never was a bus boy, but I think working in a job like that, uh, working as uh, at the wait staff, um, anything sort of related to that, I think is a really, really good experience for young people. Um, I was a waiter. I was a little bit older, but it was really good experience. I didn't do it very, for very long. Um, but I almost think that this should be almost mandatory work for teenagers uh, because I think it's it's just very helpful and I think you just learn a lot. Um, and yeah, it's it's good, good work. You don't have to do it forever, but it's good experience. So next we have the third form of bus. This is an abbreviation for business. And here we go with bus bar, two words, noun from 1893. A conductor or an assembly of conductors for collecting electric currents and distributing, distributing them to outgoing feeders. Hmm. I remember the, well, I wasn't there, so I don't remember, but uh, the Columbian Exposition, the World's Fair in Chicago, uh, was in 1893, and I think they had a lot of new electrical stuff probably at that fair, um, and so I wonder if this was connected to that at all. Did they, because they had, they were, 
you know, introducing all these new electrical stuff was bus bar introduced at that same time, at that same event. I don't know. Uh, okay, next we have bus boy, noun from 1913, a waiter's assistant, specifically one who removes dirty dishes and resets tables in a restaurant. So this is also from the word omnibus, which according to this, it looks like it's saying that it means bus boy, but that seems kind of weird. It doesn't say what language it's from. Um, so yeah, I'm just super curious about what omnibus means because uh, to my mind, bussing dishes and a bus that carries people around aren't that related. But I guess if I think about it, it sort of just means like I'm taking a th- one thing from one place to another place, whether it's dishes from a table to the dishwasher or if it's people from one bus stop to another bus stop. Uh, so I don't know. That's all I can think. I mean, I've heard of the word omnibus, but I guess I don't really know what it means in this context. Um, okay, next we have Busby. B-U-S-B-Y, noun from 1853. One, a military full-dress fur hat with a pendant bag on one side, usually of the color of regimental facings. Didn't totally understand all of that, but uh, maybe we can find a picture of this Busby hat. Uh, Number two, the bearskin worn by British guardsmen, and it is not used by the guardsmen themselves. Interesting. Interesting. Uh, so this is probably just from the name Busby. Uh, so maybe they invented this hat. I don't know. Uh, and then lastly, we have the word Bush, B-U-S-H. It is the first form. The second form will be in tomorrow's episode. This is a noun from the 14th century. 1A synonym is shrub, especially a low, densely branched shrub. 1B, a close thicket of shrubs suggesting a single plant. 2 a large, uncleared, or sparsely settled area, as in Australia, usually shrub-covered or forested, and then a synonym for that is wilderness, and that is usually used with the word the, the bush. Yes, I mean, I think we've all had that, heard that in terms of Australia. I'm going to go into the bush. Uh, it's, it's, it's scary out there. It's hard. You can't really live there so good, um, so be careful if you do that. Uh, then we have 3A, which is archaic. A bunch of ivy formerly hung outside a tavern to indicate wine for sale. Interesting. Huh. That's kind of interesting. That's, uh, I think that's cool that they would put ivy up, you know, outside of a tavern uh, just to say that we sell wine, which not uh, back in the day, not everybody could, uh, could probably sell wine. Um, let's see. 3B is obsolete. We have the synonym tavern. Uh, 3C synonym is advertising uh, as in the example good wine needs no bush and that is a quote from shakespeare so what exactly needs no advertising i wonder why um oh maybe maybe that's related it looks like it's related to this whole tavern thing i think he's basically saying you know if you've got really good wine you don't need to advertise it by a using a bush which means ivy to say that you sell wine uh, you know, if you've got good wine, people are going to come and the word is going to spread. It's going to be the word of mouth to say, hey, they've got wine. They've got good wine. You should go get it. You don't need to put up ivy, uh, which we call a bush, I guess. Um, and now we have number four, a bushy tuft or mass, as in a bush of hair. I feel like I have a bush of hair right now. I haven't had it cut for a while and it's getting a little out of, it's getting a little uh, crazy. Um, let's see, and then we have especially, regarding a bushy tufter mass, especially the 2A definition for the second form of the word brush. And number five, synonym is minor league, and that is usually used in plural, um, as in spent 10 years in the bushes. No clue why that is. Uh, let's look at the etymology. It basically comes from busk, B-U-S-K, which means forest. So we had burst, burster, burthen, birthweed, bury, burying beetle, bus, bus bar, bus boy, busby, and bush. Um, hmm, what do we want to pick? Maybe I'll just pick a bus bar as the word of the episode because uh, it had to do with electricity, which is kind of interesting. Um, maybe I can look more into this and what, what it actually is. We'll see. 
thank you very much for listening. And until next time, this is Spencer Dispensing Information. Goodbye. Hello, word nerds. Welcome to the dictionary episode. What am I saying? This is the dictionary podcast. This episode um, starts with the second form of the word bush, B-U-S-H. And uh, there's a there's a lot of uh, bush words into the next episode. Uh, so this one is a tre- it's a verb from the 15th century. Uh, by the way, we are at the top of page 167. So th- we are starting with transitive to support, mark, or protect with bushes, and then intransitive says to extend like a bush or resemble a bush. Uh, now we have the third form of bush. It is an adjective from. 1595, one, having a low-growing, compact, bushy habit. Also, uh, or sorry, used, uh, am I Canadian today? Sorry, uh, used especially of cultivated beans, as in bush snap beans. Number two, serving, occurring in or used in the bush, as in bush planes. Uh, Planes like uh, the flying planes. Fourth form of bush. This is a noun from uh, 1566, chiefly British, and it means uh, the synonym is bushing, which I assume we will get to later this episode. Uh, This is from the Dutch word bus, which means bushing or box. Uh, And there's more at the word box. Next is the fifth form of bush, adjective for 19, adjective from... Maybe I should uh, not... My brain doesn't seem to be doing this today. Okay, adjective from 1959. Falling below acceptable standards. Synonym is unprofessional, as in bush behavior. And this is short for bush league, which we will also be getting to, I think, later this episode. Yes. All right, next we have bush baby. Two words, noun from 1901. Any of several small nocturnal arboreal African primates with large eyes, long ears, and uh, a long tail and elongated hind limbs that enable them to leap with great agility. And it is called also Galago. Uh, so let's see. I think the, the genus name is Galago and related genera of the family Lorisidae. So obviously we have to post a picture of this bush baby. Although it seems like Galago is probably the more scientifically correct name for them. Next is bush basil. Two words. Noun from 1597. A sweet basil of a cultivar with small leaves. Next is bush buck. How do you... Bush buck. I think that's how it's said. Bush buck. One word. Noun from 1852. A small African striped antelope. Uh, especially of sub-Saharan forests that has spirally twisted horns in the male. Definitely got to post a picture of a bush buck. The scientific name is Tragalaphus scriptus. Yeah. Um, And it is a translation of the Afrikaans word bosbok. B-O-S-B-O-K. Maybe we already uh, posted that one or talked about that. Next is bush clover, two words, noun from circa 1818, any of several usually shrubby, hmm, lespedesas, lespedesas, uh, I don't know what that is, it looks sort of like a Spanish word. Next we have bushed, bush with an ed, first form adjective from the 14th century, one Covered with or as if with a bushy growth, like my face has a bushy beard, sort of. Uh, Number two is chiefly Australian. Uh, Then we have 2A, lost especially in the bush. And 2B, we have the number one definition for the word perplexed. And then another synonym is confused. And then uh, number three, synonyms are tired and exhausted. Next is the second form of bushed, adjective from 1907, having a bushing. Now we have the word bushel, first form, noun from the 14th century. One, any of various units of dry capacity. And then it says to see the weight table, like how heavy things are. Uh, Number two, a container holding a bushel. Three, a large quantity, as in 
bushels of money. Yeah, I know that a bushel is a very specific amount of stuff, uh, but I don't know what the conversion is exactly. So that's probably what they talk about in the weight table. Uh, let's see. This is from uh, Middle English, bushel, from Anglo-French, bousel or bushel, from Old French, bois, which is a measure of grain, um, also of Celtic origin, akin to the Middle Irish, boss, which means breadth of the hand. Now we have the second form of bushel. This is the verb form uh, from circa 1877. Seriously, what is with this yawning thing? I mean, it's not like I'm tired. This, I guess this podcast really does put you to sleep. All right. Uh, okay. The synonyms for bushel verb are repair and renovate. And busheler is a noun. So this is probably from the German... Boseln, which means to do poor work, to patch, and akin to the Old English biaton, which means to beat. Next, we have bush, fire, one word, noun from 1832. It is Australian, and it means an uncontrolled fire in a bush area. Uh, they, they have a big, there's a big area in Australia called the bush that we talked about, I think, in the last episode. Uh, and so you don't, you don't want fires, um, unless they're controlled fires, but yes, this one is an uncontrolled fire. Next we have Bushido, capital B-U-S-H-I-D-O, noun from 1898, a feudal military Japanese code of behavior valuing honor above life. And, uh, yes, this is a Japanese word. Next we have Bushing, noun from 1839, one, a usually removable cylindrical lining for an opening, as of a mechanical part, used to limit the size of the opening, resist abrasion, or serve as a guide. Number two, an electrically insulated, no, an electrically insulating lining for a hole to protect a through conductor. A through conductor, okay. Lots of mechanical electrical stuff I do not know. Next, we have bush jacket. Two words, noun from circa 1939. A long cotton jacket resembling a shirt and having four patch pockets and a belt. It's probably, uh, yes, it says it is from its use in rough country. So they probably wear this out in the Australian bush. And you need uh, jackets with lots of pockets because you never know what you're going to need out there. So that's that. Next, we have bushland, one word, noun from 1827, and we just have the number two definition for the first form of the word bush. Next is bush league, two words with a hyphen, adjective from 1908, being of an inferior class or group of its kind, class or group of its kind, also marked by a lack of sophistication or professionalism. Next, we have Bush League again, but there is no hyphen. Two words, noun from 1902. Synonym is minor league, and Bush Leaguer is a noun. Still don't understand why they have Bush in that, in Bush League. And then finally, we have Bushman, one word, noun from 1785. Number one is capitalized. Uh, Then we have 1A and 1B. So 1A says a member of of a group of short-statured peoples of southern Africa who traditionally live by hunting and foraging. And 1b, the Khoisan languages spoken by these people. So I have to say that I do not know how to pronounce that word, but it is spelled K-H-O-I-S-A-N. I I know I pronounced it incorrectly. So the etymology for this number 1 says it's modified of the obsolete Afrikaans word uh, boschesman. Uh, um, you know, you know, I screwed that up. B-O-S-C-H-J-E-S-M-A-N, uh, which is probably, or it looks like it's from basically the word that means forest, and then the also the word that means man. Uh, you know, it's man is man, man, man. Uh, so that's uh, that's where you get bushman. And then we have number 2A, synonym is woodsman, 
and to be is chiefly Australian, a person who lives in the bush. So we had bush, bush baby, bush basil, bush buck, bush clover, bushed, uh, bushel, bushfire, bushido, bushing, bush jacket, bushland, bush league, bush league, and bush man. Well, I think um, partly because it was just the most different, but also because I think it's um, um, what do I want to say? Uh, well, uh, the word is bushido. That's the one I'm going to pick uh, as the word of the episode. But um, you know, it's it's uh, I feel like in especially in other cultures, um, in man, my my brain is just a blank today. Um, especially in Asian cultures, there is a lot more um respect put towards certain things like honor. Uh, there the culturally, it's just a very different world from what we're used to here in America. And the fact that they have a name for something like this, I think, is is very cool. Um, it values honor above life, uh, and you know, I think I think there's something special to that. Um, so, you know, I don't know if I would necessarily, uh, I, I don't know, I don't know. I, I just think it's cool that that there is this uh, this idea out there. Man, I don't have the words; they're all in front of me, but I don't have them in my head. Uh, sorry for this terrible, terrible episode, but, um, but yeah, that's, that's where we're ending this. Um, it's, it's, if you want to support capitalism, I think today is Black Friday, maybe. Uh, so go do that. I'm not really probably, probably going to do that. Um, that's all I got to say. Thank you very much for listening to this episode. This is Spencer Dispensing Information. Goodbye. Hello, word nerds. Welcome to... The podcast called the uh, the the dictionary. I was about to say it's called the episode, but this episode is starting with the word bushmaster. One word, noun from 1826, a pit viper of Central and South America that is the largest New World venomous snake. And you know what? My feet are so warm. I meant to take my socks off before I recorded this one, and I forgot to do that. So let's take the socks off now, because you you don't want super hot feet, right? Uh, okay, next we have bush pig, one word, noun from 1840, a wild, usually reddish to black pig of forests and scrubland of sub-Saharan Africa and Madagascar that has much facial hair, long pointed ears, and a light colored mane along the top of the neck and back. Well, of course, we have to post a picture of both the bush master and the bush pig, I think it's pretty funny that the bush master has master. It's like it's a it's a spider. It's a viper. I'm not a spider. It's a snake. It's a viper. Um, but th- anyway, so bush pig. Uh, the scientific name is Potamocerus porcus. <laughs> porcus. Uh, all right. Next we have bush pilot. Two words. Noun from 1936. A pilot who flies a small plane into remote areas. Next is bush ranger. One word, noun from 1801. Number one is Australian, an outlaw living in the bush. Number two, synonyms are frontiersman and woodsman. And bush ranging, bush ranging is a noun. Next we have bush shirt, two words. That's a lot of SH sounds, bush shirt. Uh, This is a noun from 1909, a usually loose fitting cotton shirt with patch pockets and this is from its use in rough country so you probably are wearing a bush shirt underneath your bush jacket and that's all i got uh so the next one um some of you might giggle a little bit when you hear it um it is the word bush tit one word noun from circa 1889 uh it is a small gray tit mouse of western north america with light underparts that occurs in several geographic forms and the scientific name is saltraparis minimus salt the the salt saltraparis is spelled p-s-a-l-t-r-i-p-a-r-u-s did i say it correctly i think i did but i think the p is silent saltraparis minimus uh that's a little mouse Next, we have Bushveld, or bush, Bushfelt, Bushfelt. One word, it is spelled B-U-S-H-V-E-L-D, 
noun from 1879. Velt of Southern Africa with abundant shrubby and often thorny vegetation. So this is a part translation of the Afrikaans bosvelt, which is from bos, which means bush, plus velt, or felt. Uh, still not exactly sure what a, uh, a felt is in this case, but it's, uh, it's in southern Africa. Next we have bushwhack, one word, verb from uh, 1866. First is transitive, synonym is ambush, and then broadly, to attack suddenly. And then um, also the synonym, assault. Now we have intransitive, to clear a path through thick woods, especially by chopping down bushes and low branches. Bushwhacker is a noun. And next is bushy. It's the last of the bush words, adjective from the 14th century. One, full of or overgrown with bushes. Number two, resembling a bush, especially being thick and spreading. Bushily is an adverb, and bushiness is a noun. And then finally, we have our last word for this episode, which has a whole bunch of definitions and also some synonym information. So it is the word business, B-U-S-I-N-E-S-S. Is it just me, or do I, I always second guess myself on how to spell this word? I feel like I can't be the only one. Uh, but yeah, it's business. So let's see. This is a noun from the 14th century. Century Number one is archaic. Purposeful activity. And a synonym is, uh, is busyness. B-U-S-Y-N-E-S-S. Busyness. Are we going to see that here in the book? I am looking. Um, yeah, maybe. It's, it might be on the next page. Uh, okay, enough of that nonsense. Number 2A, synonyms are role and function, as in how the human mind went about its business of learning. And that is a quote from H.A. Overstreet. 2B, an immediate task or objective. Synonym is mission. As in, what is your business here? To see a particular field of endeavor, as in, the best in the business. 3A, a usually commercial or mercantile activity engaged in, uh, engaged in as a means of livelihood. Synonyms are trade and line, as in, in the restaurant business. 3B, a commercial or sometimes an industrial enterprise, also uh, such enterprises, as in the business district. 3C, dealings or transactions, especially of an economic nature. Synonym is patronage, as in took their business elsewhere. 4, synonyms are affair and matter, as in the whole business got out of hand. Also as in business as usual. Number five, synonyms are creation and concoction. Number six, movement or action, as lighting a cigarette, by an actor intended especially to establish atmosphere, reveal character, or explain a situation, uh, called also stage business. And then uh, the part in parentheses was as lighting a cigarette. That's just an example of what some stage business might be. 7a, personal concern, as in, none of your business. 7b, synonym is right, which is spelled R-I-G-H-T, as in, you have no business speaking to me that way. If anybody spoke to me, then maybe I could say that. 8a, serious activity requiring time and effort, and usually the avoidance of distractions, as in, got down to business. 8b, Maximum effort. 9A, a damaging assault. 9B, synonyms are rebuke and tongue lashing. 9C, synonym is double cross. Number 10, the last one, a bowel movement. And that is used especially of pets. Yep, they got to go do their business. I mean, really, you could talk about it. You could, uh, you could talk about humans with this one, too. Gotta, gotta go do my business. Did you do your business today? 
Oh, you haven't done your business. Maybe you, you got to try later. Do some business. All right. Synonym information. Business, commerce, trade, industry, and traffic mean activity concerned with the supply and distribution of commodities. Business may be an inclusive term, but specifically designates the activities of those engaged in the purchase or sale of commodities or in related financial transactions. That was a long sentence. Commerce and trade imply the exchange and transportation of commodities. Industry, where's the emphasis? Industry applies to the production, no, the producing of commodities, especially by manufacturing or processing, usually on a large scale. And traffic applies to the operation and functioning of public carriers of goods and persons. And then at the end, another synonym, it says, see in addition the word work, W-O-R-K. So we had bush master, bush pig, bush pilot, bush ranger, bush shirt, bush tit, bush felt, bush whack, bushy, and business. Hmm. Ooh, this is hard. Um, I guess I will pick, um, I don't know. The, the, for some reason, the, the pig one is jumping out at me. I, I can post a picture, but I can also choose it as the word of the episode. Bush pig is the word of the episode. It sounds like a pretty cool looking pig. It's got facial hair and long pointed ears. Great. Sounds good, Spencer. Thank you, Spencer. That's the end of the episode. Thank you very much for listening. And until next time, this is Spencer Dispensing Information. Goodbye. Hello, Word Nerds. Welcome to this podcast about all of the stuff in the English language. This podcast is called The Dictionary. I feel like you should probably already know that because you turned it on. Uh, Okay, the first word is business administration. Two words, noun from circa 1911. A program of studies in a college or university providing general knowledge of business principles and practices. No, I, I, I did not study business. It probably would have been incredibly practical for me to learn that, but I didn't. Uh, next we have business card. Two words, noun from 1840. A small card bearing information as name and address about a business or business representative. Next, we have business class, two words, noun from 1976, a class of air transportation at a fare lower than first class and higher than coach. I was incredibly lucky to fly business class once uh, to the other side of the world for work, and it was pretty amazing. I'm not going to lie. Again, this was for work. I could never afford something like this, uh, but I, I took advantage of it, and it was very, very cool. Uh, okay, next we have business cycle. Two words, noun from 1919. A cycle of economic activity, usually consisting of recession, recovery, growth, and decline. Yeah, everything in the world is on a cycle. Uh, it's birth and death and everything in between. Uh, so yeah, of course, businesses are going to have cycles. Uh, Next, we have business end, two words, noun from 1878. The end with, from, or through which a thing's function is fulfilled, as in the business end of a revolver. Uh, That's the place where all the business happens. Next is business like, one word, adjective from 1791. One, exhibiting qualities believed to be advantageous in business. Number two, Synonyms are serious and purposeful. Next is businessman. Don't worry, we do have businesswoman coming up. Uh, Businessman is a noun from 1826, a man who transacts business, especially a business executive. Let's see what businesswoman says, but it's not not time for that yet. We got to go in order. Uh, Next is business people. Ooh, that's very all-encompassing. Thank you, business people. Noun from 1865. Persons active in business. Persons active in business. Yes. Uh, next is business person. When you got more than one of these persons, they get they become a people. Noun from 1974. A businessman or businesswoman. 
So you start with a businessman and a businesswoman, and they are business persons, and then you got more than one persons, and you got business people. Next is business suit. Two words. Noun from 1870. Oh man, I really want a swimsuit that looks like a like a like the suit that you would wear to business with a tie and like the whole like full body swimming suit that looks like uh just a suit. It's the, you're using the same word for both. That's confusing. Swimsuit, business suit. All right, a suit consisting of matching coat and trousers or coat and skirt and sometimes a vest. It did, didn't mention a tie. I mean, wouldn't wouldn't the tie be I guess it's not technically part of the suit. Next is businesswoman, noun from 1844, a woman who transacts business, especially one who is a business executive. And I like that it um is the exact same definition as businessman. It's just a woman in, instead of a man. Uh if it were different, if it didn't have the um the executive part, I would be very, much more frustrated. Uh, but it's it's good that it's the same. Except what they didn't throw in there is that uh, that you could add a tagline, something like, but they make less money than the businessman, which is just baffling to me that this is that's still happening. Uh, okay, next we have busing. B-U-S-I-N-G could also be B-U-S-S-I-N-G. Uh, this is a noun from 1923. The act of transporting by bus. Specifically, the transporting of children to a school outside their residential area as a means of achieving racial balance in that school. Uh, yeah, that's just, uh, yeah. Okay, uh, next we have busker, noun from uh, 1857. It is chiefly British, a person who entertains in a public place for donations. Busk is also an intransitive verb. So this is from the word busk, which is probably from the Italian buscare, which means to procure or gain, and from Spanish buscar, which means to look for. Um, I mean, the Italian one makes more sense to me, uh, but then the Spanish one, what are, what, are, what, are, what are you looking for? I guess you're looking for donations when you're doing this. Uh, yeah. Uh, there's there's been a little part of me that sort of thought it would be fun to go do this. I, I play the hand drums a little bit and the didgeridoo. I don't really play anything else that is typical of, of busking. Um, like, I don't play the guitar or anything like that. But, you know, I just I haven't played the drums for a long time, and I just thought it would be fun to to go out and just have fun and make, make some music and maybe put a smile on some people's face. And it wouldn't be so much for to make money. I mean, I'll, I'll accept it, but it was just more about like, hey, let's just have some fun. Next, we have buskin. Uh, this is a noun from 1503. One, a laced boot reaching halfway or more to the knee. Number two A, uh, we have the number one definition for the word cothurnus. C-O-T-H-U-R-N-U-S. Cothurnus. Two uh, B, Synonym is tragedy, especially tragedy resembling that of ancient Greek drama. I should learn more about those ancient Greek stories. Uh, okay, next we have busload. One word, noun from 1938. A load that fills a bus, as in busload of tourists. What else can you load a bus with? And how many of those things will it take to load a bus? Uh, how many fruitcakes, uh, how many pumpkins does it take to load a bus? Uh, next we have Busman's Holiday, noun from 1893, a holiday spent in following or observing the practice of one's usual occupation. Why is it called a Busman's Holiday? Uh, okay, next we have Bus, B-U-S-S, -S, noun from 1570, and the synonym is the, just the word kiss, K-I-S-S. -S. Uh, bus is also a transitive verb. So this is probably an alternative of the Middle English word basen, which means to kiss. Okay. Uh, never heard this. Um, maybe we should bring it back. Um, okay. When you are under the mistletoe, you will bus and you will not kiss. Next, we have the last word of this episode. It is bust, B-U-S-T. Uh, the first and second forms are in this episode. Noun from 
1645. This is the first form, obviously. Number one, a sculptured representation of the upper part of the human figure, including the head and neck, and usually part of the shoulders and breast. Number two, the upper part of the human torso between neck and waist, especially the breasts of a woman. And this is from, uh, let's see, French, Buste, B-U-S-T-E, don't know how to pronounce it, from Italian, Busto, and also from Latin, Bustum, which means tomb, T-O-M-B, like the thing that a dead body is in? Hmm, that's interesting. Uh, And then we have, finally, the second form of bust. This is a transitive, no, it's just a verb. I mean, it is a verb. Um, Is it... Uh, transitive. It's definitely transitive. And are there intrans... Yes, there are some intransitive as well. Sorry, there's a lot of information to look through to find that information. Uh, Okay, so we are starting with transitive. 1A, to break or smash, especially with force. Uh, Also, to make inoperative. Hulk, bust. Doesn't quite have the same ring to it, does it? As in, busted my watch. 1B, to bring an end to... Synonym is break up, as in helped bust trusts. Uh, Okay, and that is uh, a quote from Newsweek. This is also often used with the word up, as in better better not try to bust up his happy marriage. And that is a quote from Forbes. So we had two two sort of parts to the definition and two examples in uh, 1B. Moving on to 1C, to run financially. 1 Oh, sorry. Ooh, that totally changes everything. It's Sorry, it's to ruin financially. I was going to say, that didn't make any sense in my brain. So when you are financially ruined, you are busted. Uh, 1D, synonyms are exhaust and wear out. And this is used in phrases like bust one's butt to describe making a strenuous effort. Man, I'm busting my butt every day to make the money. Uh, next, we have 1E. To give a hard time to, and that is often used in phrases like bust one's chops. Uh, yeah, it's funny, bust, bust people's chops. Uh, next, we have number two, synonym is tame, as in bronco busting. Number three, synonym is demote. Number four is slang, and we have 4A and 4B. So 4A synonym is arrest, as in busted for carrying guns. It's a very simple quote, but it is a quote technically from Saul Gottlieb. He said something like busted for carrying guns. 4B synonym is raid, R-A-I-D, as in busted the apartment. Number five synonyms are hit and slug. Now we have intransitive. One, to go broke. 2A synonym is burst, as in laughing fit to bust. Laughing fit. Fit to bust? Okay. Uh, 2B, synonym is breakdown. 3A, to lose at cards by exceeding a limit, as the count of 21 in blackjack. 3B, to fail to complete a straight or flush in poker. Ah, you busted. So we had business administration, business card, business class, business cycle, business end, business like, business man, business people, business person, business suit, business woman, Bussing, busker, buskin, busload, busman's holiday, bus, and bust. Um, let's see. <laughs> so I, I feel like I kind of want to pick the word bussing as the word of the episode. Um, I'll just reread that one real quick. Uh, so it's the act of transporting by bus, specifically the transporting of children to a school outside of their residential area as a means of achieving racial balance in that school. So uh, kids of one race are taken from one town to a different town to go to school, so there is more racial equality in that school system. Um, you know, I, I, I am not smart enough. I don't follow politics enough. Um, in general, it seems like a good idea. I think that I have also heard that maybe people aren't so thrilled. I mean, I don't know. I feel like there are probably pros and cons to this, although I can't think of really what the cons are, but I'm sure they're there. Uh, I don't I don't follow this stuff so good, so closely. Um, but I just, I think, I don't know, it, it just seems like a good idea. I, you know, I think that there are obvious, very obvious benefits to people who 
only have their group of people around them to experience other people's outside of their their culture, their race, their whatever it is. Uh, they are going to grow up to be, I think, better people, more well-rounded people. Um, and so, I don't know, this seems like a good idea. So I'm picking busing as the word of the episode. Um, but please, if you if you have issues with this, if you know of things that I don't know about of why maybe there are problems with this, um, you know, I, I think that the maybe the one of the more obvious ones would be, you know, you're taking kids out of their own school district where maybe they have friends already who maybe live near them, and you're taking them away from their friends. But they also then have the opportunity to make other friends and, you know, grow the grow the community, grow the culture um, in, in better ways. I, I don't know. That's just what I'm thinking. Uh, so we're going to end the episode there. Thank you very much for listening. And until next time, this is Spencer dispensing information. Goodbye. Hello, word nerds. Welcome to the dictionary. This is the podcast about all the stuff. We are in the last section of page 167. And I will have to do a page flip at the end to get the last couple of lines. Uh, you know, I hope you're all doing well. Uh, we are, oh, this is also the last day of November. Somehow we are almost at the end of 2020, one of the most ridiculous years in all of human recorded history. It is crazy. Um, so, uh, let's see, what do I got to say? We're, we're almost at the end of the year. We're almost at the end of the bees. It's coming up quick. Uh, so please, 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 you know, rate and review this podcast, especially on Apple podcasts. If you so have the ability Please tell everybody about this. Uh, Subscribe and the share and uh, follow me on social media, Instagram, Twitter. Uh, Email me at dictionarypod at gmail.com if you want to talk. And uh, that's all I got to say. So let's talk about the words. First word is bust. B-U-S-T. This is the third form. Noun from 1840. 1A. Synonym is spree. 1B. A hearty drinking session as in a beer bust. If I heard a beer bust, I would not think of it being a hearty drinking session. I would think of it as somebody is busting down a a bar for doing something illegal. But I guess that's not what it is. 2A, a complete failure. Synonym is flop. 2B, a business depression. Number three, synonyms are punch and sock. Number four is slang. So 4A, a police raid. For B, uh, the number two definition for the word arrest. And finally, the fourth form of bust uh, could also just be busted. Adjective from 1837. Synonyms are bankrupt and broke, as in go bust. Next, we have bustard. Bust with an A-R-D, noun from the 15th century. Any of a family of large, chiefly terrestrial, old world, and Australian game birds. And the family name is Otididae. O-T-I-D-I-D-A-E. So this is from Middle French, bistard. From Old English, bistarda. From the Latin uh, avis tarda, or avis tarda. Uh, That's two words. And that literally means slow bird. Interesting. Okay. Uh, I want, is it like literally just slow or is it maybe not so smart? Maybe it's dumber than the other birds. And so that's why, I don't know. Next we have Buster, noun from 1831. 1A is chiefly Midland, someone or something extraordinary, as in a buster of a breakfast. And that is a quote from Harriet B. Stowe, S-T-O-W-E. 1B. An unusually sturdy child. They call that that kid a buster. Uh, 1C is often capitalized. Synonym is fellow. And this is usually used as a form of address. As in, hey, buster, come here. Okay, what do you got to say to me? I don't know. I just wanted to call you buster. Number two is chiefly Australian. A sudden violent wind often coming from the south. Three. One that breaks, breaks up, or eliminates something, as in crime busters. Uh, As, 3A, synonym is plow. 3B, a person who breaks horses. And uh, that one is short for bronco buster. And then number four, a bad fall. Next we have bustier. Bust with an I-E-R. 
noun from 1979, a tight-fitting, often strapless top worn as a brassiere or outer garment. Uh, it's, it's a French word, bustier. Next is bustle, B-U-S-T-L-E, first form, verb from 1580. Uh, let's see, I think it's just intransitive. Number one, to move briskly and often ostentatiously. Two, to be busily astir. Synonym is team, T-E-E-M. And bustling is an adjective. Bustlingly is an adverb. And what is the etymology you have to say? Probably an alternative of the obsolete buskle, which means to prepare. Uh, frequent of busk, b- old, Eng- old Norse buask, to prepare oneself. Yeah, to prepare oneself. Um, yeah, okay. Uh, now we have the second form of bustle, noun from 1621. Noisy, energetic, and often obtrusive activity, as in the hustle and bustle of the big city. Uh, yeah, and that's, you know, similar to the first one. You're moving briskly and ostentatiously, and you're g- busily astir. You're getting things done. I feel like I'm always bustling about. I stay pretty busy. Uh, now we have the third form of bustle, noun from 1786. A pad or framework expanding and supporting the fullness and drapery of the back of a woman's skirt or dress. Also, the drapery so supported. And the origin is unknown. Next, we have bust line, one word, noun from 1915. One, an arbitrary line encircling the fullest part of the bust. Uh, And that, uh, well, we'll just finish off. This is number two, body circumference at the bust. Uh, So that is related to, um, I guess if we go back to the first form of bust, uh, that is, uh, let's see, where is it? Uh, It basically is like the 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 breasts of a woman um, from the back to the front um, so that the bust line is just all around that uh, next we have busty adjective should I have said that this section of the episode is a little bit more adult related eh, it's kind of on the border I mean this is these are just the things these are our our bodies and stuff it's whatever uh, so this is an adjective from 1944 having a large bust next we have Buselfin, B-U-S-U-L-F-A-N, noun. Man, we haven't had one of these uh, s- more scientific uh, g- chemistry words for a while. Uh, this is a noun from circa 1958. An antinio plastic agent, C6, H14, O6, S2, used in the treatment of chronic myelogenous leukemia. Myelogenous leukemia. Uh, well, I hope it works. It's used as a treatment, so yes, I hope it works. Uh, and next and last word is busy. B u s y. First form, adjective from before the twelfth century. One a. Engaged in action. Synonym is occupied. One b. Being in use, as in found the telephone busy. Two full of activity. Synonym is bustling, as in a busy seaport. Three, foolishly or intrusively active. Synonym is meddling. Four, full of distracting detail, as in a busy design. Busily is an adverb, and busyness is a noun. And uh, let's see, the etymology says not too terribly interesting. It's just from older English and Dutch words and German. But we have some synonym information. Busy, industrious, diligent, assiduous, and sedulous mean actively engaged or occupied. Busy chiefly stresses activity as opposed to idleness or leisure, as in too busy to spend time with the children. Industrious implies characteristic or habitual devotion to work, as in industrious employees. Diligent suggests earnest application to some specific object or pursuit, as in very diligent in her pursuit of a degree. Assiduous, which is spelled A-S-S-I-D-U-O-U-S, assiduous stresses careful and unremitting application, as in 
assiduous pra- I have to turn the page uh, assiduous practice and then sedulous which is spelled s e d u l o u s implies painstaking and persevering application as in a sedulous uh, sedulous what did i say before sedulous investigation of the murder all right so we had bust bustard buster bustier bustle bust line busty buselfin and busy Hmm. <laughs> uh, well, I, I think I want to pick busy as the word of the episode because I don't know. I don't know why I like to stay busy. Um, you know, I'm, I'm obviously pretty good at not doing stuff. I can sit and watch TV for hours on end if I so choose. Uh, but oftentimes I feel like I just got to stay busy and, and just do stuff and create and record this or edit or whatever it is. I don't know. I don't know why, but that's me. Uh, Okay, so uh, that is it for this episode. Thank you very much for listening. We have finished page 167. This has been Spencer Dispensing Information. Goodbye. Hello, word nerds. Welcome to the dictionary. Uh, So we are, oh boy, we are in the home stretch. Today is December 1st, and we literally only have 10 episodes left of the letter B. What, what, what is going to happen? What, how, how did this, how, what does going on here who what where when why and how okay the first word we are at the top of page 168 the first word is busy b-u-s-y second form verb from uh, before the 12th century to make busy synonym is occupy that was transitive now we have intransitive synonym is bustle as in small boats busied to and fro And that is a quote from Quentin Crewe, C-R-E-W-E. Next, we have busybody. One word, noun from 1526. An officious or inquisitive person. Oh, yeah, we know lots of busybodies. Next is busy work. One word, noun from 1910. Work that usually appears productive or of intrinsic value, but actually only keeps one occupied. So you're doing a lot of work, but it doesn't actually mean anything, and it's not beneficial in any way. Um, You know, it's kind of like this podcast. Next, we have the word but, B-U-T. There are five forms of this word. The first one is the longest. This is a conjunction. Uh, Let's see. Wow, there's lots of etymology. Uh, From before the 12th century, 1A except for the fact that. Uh, yeah, we've seen s- other conjunction, other words like this that have very strange uh, definitions. Uh, but, but you know, obviously, if you were to replace the words, except for the fact. Uh, did I say that in there? It doesn't say that. It just says, except for the fact. Um, so if you were to replace that with the word but in a sentence, it would make sense. Uh, and there is an example. So, uh, again, the definition is just, except for the fact, and then the example is, would have protested, but that he was afraid. I just have to say again, some of these examples are super weird and not really the way that people speak or write. I mean, obviously, somebody wrote this, so it, it makes sense, but that that's not a typical example. I think for some people, that example makes it more confusing, actually. But... Ah, see, I used it. I say but a lot. Uh, So if we were to replace the word but with the definition, the quote would now say, or the example would say, would have protested except for the fact that he was afraid. Uh, It almost makes more sense that way. Uh, And then we have 1B. Synonym is that. And that is used after a negative. As in, there is no doubt, but he won. Uh, Yeah, I would probably say there is no doubt that he won. I think that makes more sense. Uh, 1C, without the concomitant, that. And as in, it never rains, but it pours. It never rains without the concomitant, that it pours. I don't know if that makes as much sense. Uh, 1D, if not. Synonym is unless. I would love it if they give an example. 1E, synonym is than, T-H-A-N. As in, no sooner started, but it stopped. No sooner started, but it stopped. And then if we replace the word, it says, no sooner started than it stopped. 
which neither one really makes sense to me. Again, don't, I'm not a big fan of these examples. Uh, and then this one is not often in formal use. Now we have 2A, on the contrary, on the other hand, and a synonym is notwithstanding. And this one is used to connect, contra- uh, to connect coordinate elements, as in, he was called, but he did not answer. Yep. Uh, also is in, not peace, but a sword. That is peace as in world peace. Uh, we would like world peace. Um, and then sword like the stabby, stabby sword. Not peace, but a sword. A sword. Now we have 2B. Synonym is yet, Y-E-T, as in poor but proud. Uh, now we have 2C. With the exception of, and this is used before a word often taken to the subject of a clause, as in, none, uh, we're uh, missing my line, none the brave deserves, oh, none but the brave deserves the fair. And that is a quote from John Dryden. And we have a couple phrases, but that, and the synonym for that one is just the word that. And I think I said that three times in that sentence. Uh, and that one is used after a negative, as in, there is no doubt, but that it must, must be done. There is no doubt, but that it must be done. If, it's, if the synonym is that, why would you put the word but in there? Uh, and then we have another phrase, but what? And uh, the example, oh, let's see, the definition says that, dot, 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 not. Uh, that ellipses not, and this is used to indicate possibility or uncertainty, as in, I don't know, but what I will go. I think people don't use this form of but as much anymore. Okay, let's look at the etymology. Old English, Bhutan, it's a preposition and a conjunction, which means outside or without, or accept, or accept that, akin to the Old High German, Buzan, which means without, or accept, akin to the Old English B, which means by, or ut, which means out. And there's more at the words by and out. All right. Now we have the second form of but. It is a preposition from before the 12th century. 1A, with the exception of. Synonym is barring, B-A-R-R-I-N-G, as in no one there but me. I feel like this one makes much more sense to me. The, the conjunction form of but... It doesn't fit in my brain. And I think that, like I said, I don't think it gets used that way much anymore. Uh, And then for 1A, it says compare to the 2C definition of the first form of but, which I will read to you now, which says without the concomitant that. So it's uh, similar to that one, I guess. Now we have 1B for the second form of but other than, as in this letter is nothing but an insult. This letter is nothing other than an insult. Number 2A and 2B are both Scottish. Uh, So 2A, the synonyms are without and lacking. And then 2B, the synonym is outside. I would love examples of those in perfect Scottish language. Uh, Now we have the third form of but. This is an adverb from the 12th century. One Synonyms are only and merely, as in, he is but a child. Again, this is a much more old school way to use the word. Uh, Number two is Scottish. Synonym is outside again. Number three, to the contrary, as in, who knows but that she may succeed. It feels much more poetic uh, when you use but in this way. Who knows but but, I can't even speak. Who knows, but that she may succeed. Number four is used as an intensive. There's no actual definition. It's just used as an intensive, as in get there, but fast. I kind of like that that way to use it. I don't know if I'll remember how to do that, but I will try. Uh, Number four, the fourth form of but is a pronoun from 1556. That not. Also, who not. That not, who not. As in, nobody but has his fault. And that is a quote from Shakespeare. Uh, I just love that definition. That not or who not. And then the fifth form of but is a noun from 1724. It is Scottish and it means the kitchen or living quarters of a two-room cottage. And 
boy, howdy, do I want to see an example of this because that's crazy to me and I love that I am learning new things. Uh, so yeah, that's cool. Now we have the word butadi- butadiene. Butadiene. That's it. Butadiene. B-U-T-A-D-I-E-N-E. Noun from 1900. A flammable, gaseous, open-chain hydrocarbon, C4H6, used in making synthetic rubbers. And next is butane. Noun from 1875. Either of two isometric flammable gaseous alkanes, C4H10, obtained usually from petroleum or natural gas and used as fuels. <coughs> I was speaking so quickly because I knew the sneeze was coming. Okay. Um, now we are moving moving on to butanol or butanol. B-U-T-A-N-O-L. Noun from 1894. Either of two flammable isometric alcohols, C4H9OH, or is it, well, see, why is H in there twice? Wouldn't it be H10, or does the H come, are they not connected? How does that work? I never thought about that. Uh, Anyway, either of two flammable isometric alcohols, C4H9OH, derived from straight chain butane. Next, we have butch, B-U-T-C-H, adjective from 1941, one, notably or deliberately masculine in appearance or manner. Number two, closely cropped, as in a butch haircut. Again, as uh, similar to one that we had not too long ago, maybe don't call somebody butch if they don't want to be called butch. But if they want to, go. that's fine. Uh, butch is also a noun, and butchness is a noun. How much butchness do you have? Does it matter? No, it doesn't. You be you, be happy. Uh, And then this is probably from the word butch, which is a male nickname. Uh, Now we have the word butcher, first form, noun from the 13th century. 1A, a person who slaughters animals or dresses their flesh. They're not dressing them in coats and pants and skirts and hats. That would be silly and ridiculous. No, they're doing something much different. Uh, 1B, a dealer in meat. 2, one that kills ruthlessly or brutally. Yes. Number 3, one that bungles or botches. And number 4, a vendor, especially on trains or in theaters. Hmm, they call that a butcher? I wonder why. Uh, This is from Anglo-French Buc, B-U-C, which is a he-goat probably of Celtic origin, akin to the Middle Irish bock, B-O-C-C, which is also a he-goat, and there's more at the word buck. Uh, I'm watching a very adult show called The Boys, and one of the characters, his nickname is The Butcher. Is that his last name, now that I think about it? I think it is. Uh, Now we have the second form of butcher. This is a verb from 1562, and I think it's just transitive, one to slaughter and dress for market, as in butcher hogs. Two, to kill in a barbarous manner. Or is it barbarous? I think it's barbarous. Number three, synonym is botch, B-O-T-C-H, as in butchered the play. And next is butcher bird. Two words with a hyphen, a noun from 1668. Any of various shrikes. Well, it's some that's some sort of bird, I guess. S-H-R-I-K-E-S. All you birders know what a shrike is, but I sure don't. And lastly, we have butcher block. Two words, noun from 1967. A block made with thick strips of usually laminated hardwood, as in, uh, no, not as in, uh, butcher block with a hyphen is also an adjective. Uh, Yeah, I guess they just need a big, strong uh, block of wood to do all their cutting. Uh, so we had busy, busy body, busy work, but, 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 butadiene, butane, butanol, butch, butcher, butcher bird, butcher block. Um, let's see. Well, I think I'm going to pick busy work as the word of the episode. I don't know why. Um, I guess, I think I've mentioned this. I know I've mentioned this. I like keeping busy. I like doing things. 
So I, I probably end up doing things that are considered busy work, but most of the time I think I'm pretty good at avoiding busy work. I think I do things that are semi-practical, even though you know podcasts like this don't really mean anything in the grand scheme of things. Um, so maybe they could be considered busy work, but you know I don't think they are because I'm learning. I am actively learning from doing this, and I hope that you are too. So I don't think this is busy work, but you know sometimes... Sometimes you just need a little busy work to keep yourself busy and sane and uh, just do something. Right? Right. Happy December, last month of 2020. <laughs> Let's see what happens. Uh, okay, I think that's it for this episode. Thank you very much for listening. And until next time, this is Spencer Dispensing Information. Goodbye. Hello, word nerds. Welcome to the dictionary. It's the My Podcast, which is all about the stuff and the things. Uh, okay. Today, the first word is butcherly, B-U-T-C-H-E-R-L-Y, adjective from 1513, resembling a butcher, and a synonym is savage. You know, maybe that should make you think about what butchers do if the synonym is savage. I don't know. Okay, next is butcher, paper, two words, noun from 1944. Heavy brown or white paper used especially for wrapping meats. Well, I'm pretty sure people were butchering meat way before 1944. So why? what happened in 1944? Did they change papers? Were they using something else? I don't know. Next is butchery. Butcher with a Y. Noun from the 14th century. One is chiefly British. Synonym is slaughterhouse. Butchery almost sounds fancy. It sounds... It sounds way less bad than slaughterhouse, so no wonder they use a different word. Uh, no, but call it what it is. It's a slaughterhouse. Number two, the preparation of meat for sale. Three, cruel and ruthless slaughter of human beings. Number four, synonym is botch. Next is butte. B Y. No, that's the pronunciation. B U T E, and that is um. It's uh, it's pronounced the same as the very last word of this episode, but it's spelled a little bit differently. So this butte is a noun from 1968, and the synonym is phenylbutazone, something like that. Phenylbutazone. Next we have butene, b-u-t-e-n-e, -E, noun from 1885, a straight chain butylene. Butylene, B-U-T-Y-L-E-N-E, -E, which we will probably be reading in the next episode. When? What episode is that? Oh, we got a couple couple episodes from now. Uh, okay. Uh, let's see. That was butene. Now we have buteo. Bute with an O, noun from 1940. Any of a genus of hawks with broad, rounded wings, relatively short tails, and soaring flight. Mm, I would love to just soar in flight in the sky. Uh, the genus name is also Buteo. And okay, next we have but for. Two words, preposition from the 12th century, and the synonym is except for. Uh, that reminds me of a very silly joke from the South Park movie, which, uh, you know, it's very old at this point. Uh, it's I think it's... It's, it's fairly uh, child-appropriate, um, but one of the characters says, did you bring the butt for? And somebody says, what's the butt for? And then he says, for pooping, silly. <laughs> and he has a French accent, so it's it's extra funny that way. Uh, okay, next we have uh, ba -ba 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 -ba, butler. This is a noun from the 13th century. One, a manservant having charge of the wines and liquors. Well, any time I thought of a butler, I didn't. I thought they took care of lots of things other than just wine and liquor. But wow, that's a quite a job. Number two, the chief male servant of a household who has charge of other employees, receives guests, directs the serving of meals, and performs various personal services. Yeah, that's what I think of when I think of a butler. But now I know that they could also just be in charge of alcohol. Uh, we recently rewatched the movie Clue. If you have not seen that, you should go watch it. If you are an adult or a younger person, it is great and it's funny. And, um, you know, it's from the 80s, but it sort of has this 50s feel to it, I think. 50s, 60s. 
Um, and it's just so clever and smart and hilarious. And I suggest everybody go watch it. Um, and no, this the game did not come out after the movie. The game was first and then the movie came out. All right. So the etymology... Um, oh, interesting. So this is from um, basically old French word botel, which means bottle. Uh, and there's more at the word bottle. So that's where the whole wine and liquor thing ki- came from. So I wonder if they were, if that was the first use of the word butler, and then they their job expanded to uh, all these other things, receiving guests, et cetera, et cetera. And, uh, and they were like, that's not part of my job description. I just wanted to deal with the alcohol. All right, next we have butler's pantry, two words, noun from 1757, a service room between kitchen and dining room. Maybe that's where they store all the alcohol. No, probably not. All right, now we have the word but, B-U-T-T. In the last episode, we had but, but it only had one T. But once you add that second T, it totally changes things. Uh, There are actually six forms of this one. Uh, So the first one is a verb from the 13th century. First is intransitive. To thrust or push head first. Also, strike with a head or horns. It's always fun to do a headbutt, but it's, it's, it's not so good for your head, so don't do that. Uh, and then transitive, to strike or shove with the head or horns. Butt heads is two words, and that means to come into conflict. Uh, let's see, this is from Anglo-French, buter or boter, of Germanic origin, akin to the old high German boson, which means to beat, and there's more at the word beat. Now we have the second form of butt noun from 1647 a blow or thrust usually with the head or horns if i had horns i would be head butting all the time no i wouldn't uh third form of butt noun from the 14th century one a large cask especially for wine beer or water there if you if you go back um uh, this is head in the gutter time there is probably a bung in the butt which, yeah, okay, moving on to number two, any of various units of liquid capacity, especially a measure equal to 108 imperial gallons. That is a butt. Also, 491 liters. Uh, I think that's what it's saying, that a butt is 108 imperial gallons or 491 liters. Uh, next, we have the fourth form of butt. Uh, uh, this is a noun from the 14th century. 1A, a backstop, as a mound or bank, for catching missiles shot at a target. Uh, this reminds me of a, um, uh, but, but, but why can I think of not the, the name? It's the, um, oh my, Mythbusters. Wow, my brain is so broken. Uh, Mythbusters, they often use one of these things because they, to test... To test, uh, to test the myths, they are often uh, shooting cannons or guns or whatever, and so they use these banks of dirt or sand or whatever to, um, to stop those things. And there was one time, I think, uh, it made the news before the episode aired, obviously, because they had to go edit and all that stuff, but uh, there was this one time where I think this cannonball bounced off of the bank, which we will call a butt for this case, this scenario, and it bounced off which they were not expecting that it would do, and it bounced into uh, some neighborhood nearby, which was very bad. Um, but they got nobody was hurt, so that was good. Uh, okay, 1B for the fourth form of but. Synonym is target. 1C is plural, and we have the 5C definition for the word range. Uh, 1D, a blind for shooting birds. Number 2A is obsolete. Synonyms are limit and bound. 2B is archaic. Synonym is goal, as in, he made a goal, as in, here is my journey's end, here is my butt. Hmm. That is a quote from Shakespeare. Uh, man, it, if you don't know what he's talking about, it, it's very confusing. Uh, so it's, it's, it's a goal. Here is my journey's end, and here is my goal. But he said butt, which I think is silly. Uh, number three, an object... Or, no, an object of abuse or ridicule. Synonym is victim, as in the butt of all their jokes. 
You can have me be the butt of your jokes. That's okay. Fifth form of butt, noun from the 15th century. Number one, synonym is buttocks. And of course, uh, it's just, it's the shorter form. They just took off the last four letters and made it butt. And that is often used as a euphemism for the word ass in idiomatic expressions. As in, get your butt over here. Also as in, kick butt. Also as in, saved our butts. Number two, the large or thicker end part of something. Two, oh, and then we have 2A, a lean uppercut of the pork shoulder. And 2B, the base of a plant from which the roots spring. 2C, the thicker or handle end of a tool or weapon. 3A, an unused remainder as of a cigarette or cigar. 3B is slang. Synonym is cigarette. Although I think it's not so much the cigarette. I think it's more of the end of the cigarette. When you're done with it, it becomes a cigarette butt. Uh, Four, the part of a hide or skin corresponding to the animal's back and sides. Uh, This is from uh, Middle English, butok, which means buttock, and Lower German, butt, which means blunt. Uh, Probably like... Similar to, uh, where did that go? Like the, the larger end of something, uh, the back end, the handle, the e- handle end of a tool or a weapon. Um, it's probably blunt there, so that's probably that. Next, we have the sixth form of but. It is a verb from 1634, uh, starting with intransitive. Synonym is abut, A-B-U-T. Uh, that is used with the word on or against. But on, but against. Uh, And then the transitive, uh, number one, to place end-to-end or side-to-side without overlapping. Number two, to trim or square off as a log at the end. Number three, to reduce as a cigarette to a butt by stubbing or or stamping. And uh, I think that's good for that. And then finally, we have the other word that is pronounced butte but it is spelled B-U-T-T-E. Of course, all of us want to just say but. This is a noun from 1805. An isolated hill or mountain with steep or precipitous sides, usually having a smaller summit area than a mesa. Uh, So that's that. So we had butcher lee, butcher paper, butchery, butte, butine, buteo, but for, butler, butler's pantry, but and butte. Hmm. I think I'm going to pick butler as the word of the episode. I mean, of course, I want to pick butt as well, but that's that's too that's too obvious. Uh, so, th- yeah, let's pick butler as the word of the episode. Uh, I think butlers, um, I mean, I guess they must exist in the real world, but you, we only see them in movies unless one of you listening is super rich and you can afford a butler. Who doesn't want a butler? I want a butler. No, I don't. Uh, yeah, they're, it's, I don't think they get enough respect. They have to do a lot. There's a lot that's expected of them. Uh, so, you know, let's uh, raise a glass to the butler, and they can recommend what to put in that glass because they are in charge of the wines and liquors. That's all I got today. Thank you very much for listening. And until next time, this is Spencer Dispensing Information. Goodbye. Hello, word nerds. Welcome to the dictionary. Uh, this episode is a lot about butter. Butter, butter, butter. First word is butter. B-U-T-T-E-R. First form. Noun from before the 12th century. One, a solid emulsion of, oh, this is going to get fun, fat globules, air, and water made by churning milk or cream and used as food. Uh, Where do they get the milk and cream? They get it from animals. Yes, they do. Number two, a buttery substance as a to a any of various fatty oils remaining nearly solid at ordinary temperatures. To be a creamy food spread, especially one made of ground roasted nuts, as in peanut butter. Yeah. Number three, synonym is flattery. Butterless is an adjective, and none of us want to be butterless. Uh... Obviously, as I've mentioned many times before, I'm vegan, so I don't eat the regular butter anymore, but I sure do love me some butter. Just put that on the toast or a waffle or bagel or something. It's so good. Uh, Okay, this is from Middle English, from Old English. 
butere or butere from Latin buterum, from Greek butrion. No idea how to say these words. From oh, see, this is interesting. Oh, from bous, b o u s, which means cow, and oh, so that Greek word butyron. That is from the word cow, and that is also from the word tyros, which means cheese. Uh, so it's cow cheese, and it is akin to the what word is this? What word or uh, language? Hold on a second. Uh, a v is okay. So it's oh, it's a veston. A V E S T A N, a veston. That must be some language that I've never heard of before. Uh, a veston word, tuiri, T U I R I. That's a prefix, which means curds. And there's more at the word cow. So the word butter basically means cow cheese, which is kind of what it is, but you can also make cheese from the stuff that comes from a cow. So I'm not really sure. Uh, you know, it's. Cheese is also cow cheese. This is what I'm saying. Moving on to the second form of butter. This is a transitive verb from the 15th century. To spread with or as if with butter. Maybe I should have some toast after this because I'm getting kind of hungry and I should butter some butter on my butter toast. Next we have butter and eggs. Three words with hyphens. Uh, from, uh, what is it? Noun from 1776. Uh, I don't know. It, it must mean it probably isn't connected whatsoever. But of course, anytime I see 1776, I think of America's independence year. Uh, so it'd be great if this was related to that, but I don't think it is. Oh, it's very much not. A common Eurasian perennial herb of the snapdragon family that has showy yellow and orange flowers and is naturalized in much of North America. And it is called also toad flax. Toad F-L-A-X, one word. And the scientific name, I think when I say scientific name, I think scientific name is correct, but I also don't know if I've looked it up. And I should look it up to see if there's a different appropriate name to use there. Is it is it the Latin name? Is it scientific name? Is it something else completely different? I don't know. I should look it up. But anyway, the scientific name for this perennial herb is Linaria vulgaris. And... That is butter and eggs. Definitely got to post a picture of that. Next, we have butterball. One word, noun from 1813. Number one, synonym is bufflehead. B-U-F-F-L-E-H-E-A-D, one word. Number two, a chubby person. A butterball. Next, we have butter, bean, two words, noun from circa 1819. Number one, lima bean. That's the synonym. And then we have as 1A, which is chiefly southern and midland, a dried lima bean. And then 1B, synonym is sieva bean. S-I-E-V-A, sieva bean. Haven't heard of that. And number two, synonym is wax bean. Haven't heard of that. Number three, a green shell bean, especially as opposed to a snap bean. So those are all the kinds of butter beans. Next, we have butter clam Two words, noun from 1936. Either of two edible clams of the Pacific coast of North America. And the scientific names are Saxidomus natal- natalii. Natalii. There's a double I at the end, so that's a little bit weird. Natalii. There's also a double T and a double L. Are there any other words that have so many double letters next to each other? Natalili. And then also uh, Saxidomus giganteus. Next is buttercream, one word, noun from 1926. A sweet butter-based mixture used especially as a filling or frosting. Next is buttercup, noun from 1777. Any of a genus of herbs with yellow or white flowers and alternate leaves. The genus name is... Ranunculus, which is of the family Ranunculaceae, which is the buttercup family. Next is butter fat, one word, noun from 1889. The natural fat of milk and chief constituent of butter consisting essentially of a mixture of glycerides, 
as those derived from butyric, capric, caproic, and caprylic acids. Okay, so the natural fat of milk and chief constituent of butter consisting essentially of a mixture of glycerides that's the definition and then the glycerides are as those derives from butyric acids capric acids caproic acids and caprylic acids all of you acid fans know what those are next we have butter fingered one word adjective from 1615 Apt to let things fall or slip through the fingers. Synonym is careless. I think I'm a little butterfingered. I recently broke a couple glasses as I was washing them in the sink. Um, Yeah, also, you know, they were covered in soap, so they're slippery. But it was pretty stupid of me. Uh, And then butterfingers is a noun. You can call somebody butterfingers. Do you like the candy bar Butterfingers? Let me know. I do, although I can't eat it anymore, I don't think. But they're good. They stick in your teeth. Not as much as some candies, like Heath Bar. Mm, it's too too much teeth sticking in that one. Uh, but yeah, I like Butterfingers. No clue what's in them. Next, we have Butterfish. One word, noun from 1674. Any of numerous bony fishes, especially the family Stomatiadae, uh, which with a slippery coating of mucus. Mm, that sounds great. Next is butterfly, first form, noun from before the 12th century. One, any of numerous slender bodied diurnal lepidopteran insects, including one superfamily with broad, often brightly colored wings, and usually another superfamily comprising the skippers. Uh, there's a lot of information in there. Uh, There is a great episode of Ologies, which I haven't mentioned for a while. Um, I think it's called Lepidopterology, and that is the study of butterflies. So you should go listen to that. Number two, something that resembles or suggests a butterfly, especially a person chiefly occupied with the pursuit of pleasure. Number three, a swimming stroke executed in a prone position by moving both arms in a circular motion while kicking both legs up and down. Number four is plural. A feeling of hollowness or queasiness caused especially by emotional or nervous tension or anxious anticipation. I got the butterflies in my belly. Uh, Number five, a defensive move by a goalie in ice hockey executed by dropping to the knees while spreading the lower legs outward. And then, of course, I think they probably don't do this, but they should, you know, put their arms up like the Y in YMCA, and then they're fully butterflied. I don't know what I'm talking about. Uh, Let's see. No etymology for that one. Second form of butterfly uh, is a verb from 1954, only transitive, to split almost entirely and spread apart, as in a butterflied steak. Also as in butterflied shrimp. Next is butterfly bush. Two words, noun from 1923, Synonym is Budlia, B-U-D-D-L-E-I-A. We read that before. And then lastly, we have butterfly chair. Two words, noun from 1953. A chair for lounging consisting of a cloth sling supported by a frame of metal tubing or bars. And then there is a picture of a butterfly chair. Uh, It's exactly what it sounds like. There's a bunch of poles that go from the ground to the different, uh, the four corners, uh, two for in the front and two in the back. And uh, then there's just fabric that is uh, draped through it all, and you can sit on it because it's a chair, and it sort of looks like a butterfly shape. Uh, so uh, I will post a picture of that. Butterflies are crazy. Uh, when they, they start off as caterpillars, I mean, moths start off as caterpillars too, and... When what I've heard, and I, I, maybe the science has changed, maybe I've mistaken, but what I've heard is that when the caterpillar goes into its little cocoon to become a butterfly, it basically turns into mush. There might be a few parts that don't get all mushy, but most of it becomes complete mush. And they have actually tested that they, um, they there's some something stays with them that there's some sort of consciousness that stays with them throughout all that mushiness 
uh, because they are able to m remember things from when they were a caterpillar. I don't remember the test that they did, but they tested them. They, they, they did something when they were a caterpillar, and they did the same thing when they were a butterfly or a moth, and they remembered. And it just begs the question of what is this consciousness? What is this thing that makes them alive, that makes us alive? Is it, is it, where is it stored? What, how does that work? It's just so baffling and they are the crazy that they just turn in. What if we did that? What if when we, at a certain age, we just turned into mush and then turned into something else? That would be so crazy, but to them, it's totally normal. Today, we had the words butter, butter and eggs, butter ball, butter bean, butter clam, butter cream, butter cup, butter fat, butter fingered, butter fish, butterfly, butter bush, butterfly bush and butterfly chair i don't know what to pick um oh man well i mean we can just pick butter but i don't know something different um uh have oh if you haven't seen the movie uh, there's something about mary you should go watch it uh very much not for kids but at the end they, <laughs> it's this so silly but this great idea they in like almost every single scene of the movie or many scenes of the movie, they had people just sing to the song Buttercup. I don't know if that's the actual name of that. Buttercup. Da 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 ba da 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 ba da 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 ba da da that song. And I just thought it was such this genius idea because they film a movie like all out of order with different actors and at different times and they just had the foresight to say you know, when we're done shooting, let's just film this music video after each scene. And then they edit it all together. And it's just so goofy and funny. And what a just, just a fun song, too. Um, I don't know why they, they picked that song specifically, but they did. Anyway, uh, sure, let's pick Buttercup as the word of the episode. Thank you very much for listening. And until next time, this is Spencer Dispensing Information. Goodbye. Hello, word nerds. Welcome to the Dictionary this is the end of page 168. Getting closer to the very end of the bees. Uh, the first word is butterfly effect. Two words, noun from 1984. A property of chaotic systems, as the atmosphere, by which small changes in initial conditions can lead to large-scale and unpredictable variation in the future state of the system. Uh, you know, the, uh, the, 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 where the name comes from is the idea that the flap of the butterfly's wings from one part of the world can have huge effects somewhere else. And then, of course, we use it not to talk about uh, the atmosphere or weather or anything. Um, we also use it just to talk about how cause and effect, one thing affects the other. Uh, this is very much a true thing. Um, you know, I don't know if literally a butterfly's flap of the wings will affect something on the other side of the world, like a tornado. But, uh, you know what? It's probably going to be the word of the episode, so I'll maybe talk a little bit more about it then. But, you know, I, th I think this is a this is an interesting idea, a cool thing to think about. Moving on to butterfly... No, butterflyer. One word, noun from 1967. A swimmer who specializes in the butterfly. Butterflyer. Next is butterfly fish. Noun from 1740. One, any of a family of small, brilliantly colored bony fishes of tropical seas with a narrow, deep body and scaled fins. And the family name is Chaetonidae. C-H-A-E-T-O-D-O-N-T-I-D-A-E. Is there another sneeze coming? <coughs> oh, boy. Yeah, I'm recording four episodes, maybe five episodes at once, so... Uh, you know, I think it's it's just today and yesterday are our allergy days for me. Um, there must be something in the air. So we have uh, butterfly fish. So this, the family name I said. Number two, a small brown freshwater bony fish of Western Africa that has elongate wing-like pre uh, pectoral fins. Elongate wing-like pectoral fins. And the scientific name is Pantodon... Bocholzi of the family Pantodontidae. Pantodontidae. Okay, I think that's it. Butterfly valve is next. Two words, noun from 1846. One, a valve consisting of two semicircular clappers hinged to a cross rib 
that permits fluid flow in only one direction. I think plumbers know all about this, probably. Number two, a damper or valve in a pipe consisting of a disc turning on a bisecting axis. I should learn more about plumbing. I did a little plumbing fix recently with the help of somebody who, uh, you know, over the phone and through pictures, he helped me out. Uh, I was very gracious, very gr- uh, grateful for his help. Uh, and uh, and I was like, hey, cool, I did some plumbing. Next is butterfly weed, two words, noun from 1816. A North American milkweed with showy orange flowers born on erect leafy stems. And the scientific name is Asclepias tuberosa. Next is butterhead, one word, noun from circa 1925. Synonym is butter lettuce, like the lettuce, the leafy green that you eat, which is our next word, noun from 1972. A lettuce with a soft, loose head of tender, oily milk, mild flavored leaves, mild flavored leaves. And examples of this lettuce are bib and Boston. Bib lettuce, Boston lettuce. Uh, Sorry for the sniffles. Like I said, I got the allergy problem. Uh, Next is buttermilk. One word, noun from the 15th century. I've always been very curious. What exactly is buttermilk? Uh, So let us learn. Number one, the liquid left after butter has been churned from milk or cream. Number two, cultured milk made by the addition of suitable bacteria to sweet milk. Culture? I still don't understand. Uh, although all I know is that it supposedly tastes very bad unless you until you mix it in with other stuff. Next is butternut, noun from 1741. One, an eastern North American tree of the walnut family with sweet egg-shaped nuts and light brown wood, called also white walnut. 2A, a light yellowish brown. 2B is plural, homespun overalls dyed brown, with a butternut extract. To see, a soldier or partisan of the Confederacy during the American Civil War. Uh, maybe they wore butternut colored clothes, and that's why, I don't know. Uh, let's see. Oh, and I forgot to tell you the scientific name for this North American tree, which was in the number one, is Juglans cinerea. That's butternut. Next is butternut squash. Two words. Noun from 1945, a smooth, somewhat bottle-shaped, buff-colored, yeah, buff-colored winter squash with usually orange flesh. And the scientific name is Curcurbita moschata. Curcurbita moschata. Next is butterscotch. Noun from 1855, one, a candy made from brown sugar, butter, corn syrup, and water. Also, the flavor of such candy. Oh, I love butterscotch. 2A, no, 2, a moderate yellowish brown. Uh, that is it for butterscotch. Moving on to butter up. Two words, transitive verb from 1819. To charm or beguile with lavish flattery or praise. They've been, they're butter, butter up. Why, how did butter get into this, the mix of this? To charm or beguile with lavish flattery or praise. I don't know. Next is butterweed, one word, noun, uh, from 1837. Any of several plants having yellow flowers or smooth, soft foliage, as A, the number one definition for the word horseweed, B, any of several North American senesios, senesios, uh, as in uh, the, the scientific name senesio glabellus. Next is butterwort, butter. W-O-R-T, one word, noun from 1597. Any of a genus of herbs in the bladderwort family with fleshy leaves that produce a viscid secretion serving to capture and digest insects. And the genus name is Pinguicula. Pinguicula. P-I-N-G-U-I-C-U-L-A. Pinguicula. I have no idea if I said that correctly. Next is buttery. Uh, First form, noun from the 14th century. One, a storeroom for liquors. It's the buttery. Two, A is chiefly dialect. Synonym is pantry. 
So is it also where they would store the buttery? The I mean the butter? I don't know. I mean the pantry, yeah, that makes sense. But the the liquor part I don't get I don't get that one. Uh to be a room, as in an English cottage, stocking provisions for sale to students. A room stocking provisions for sale to students. All right. Uh, let's see. This is from uh, Anglo-French. The word but, which means cask or but. And there's more at the word but. Next is the second form of buttery adjective from the 14th century. 1A, having the qualities as smoothness or richness of butter. Having the qualities of butter as smoothness or richness, as in buttery flavors. 1B, containing or spread with butter, as in buttery pastry. 2, marked by flattery, as in buttery compliments. You can give me some buttery compliments. I just actually got a very nice email from somebody, a listener. Thank you. You know who you are. Um, I think you said you were still maybe two-thirds of the way through the A's, and uh, we talked about burps, and uh, there is a... um, if you were to become a Patreon who gets exclusive episodes, you could hear that uh, that outtake reel that I edited after the A's. Uh, but, you know, after that, I, I'm doing no editing. So all of my outtakes are in each episode. So I don't know what I'm going to do for exclusives later. I guess I'll come up with something. Uh, but yes, it was a very nice email. So thank you to you. Uh, okay, next is but hinge. B-U-T-T, second word, hinge. Noun from 1815. A hinge, usually mortised, flush into the edge of a door and its jam. Uh, And I am looking at some doors that I think have uh, these butterfly hinges. Most of them probably do. And lastly, we have but in. B-U-T-T, second word, I-N. No, I-N. Intransitive verb from 1900. To meddle in the affairs of others. Synonym is interfere. Yeah, maybe don't inter, but don't don't butt in in people's business. So we had butterfly effect, butterflyer, butterfly fish, butterfly valve, butterfly weed, butterhead, butter lettuce, buttermilk, butternut, butternut squash, butterscotch, butter up, butterweed, butterwort, buttery butt hinge and butt in. Uh, well, I did very much like butterscotch, but I am gonna pick butterfly effect. Um, yes, like I said at the beginning, it's, it's all about cause and effect. Uh, you know, one action creates, it, it, it affects the future. Um, I don't know. I don't even know how to say this. I think about this stuff a lot. Um, you know, if you do something, you make a choice that is going to have an effect on lots of things to come into the future, either in your life or other people's lives or whatever. Um, you know, any, any little choice, any little thing even if it's from an insect, hence the name, butterfly effect, is going to have some sort of effect somewhere. If you look at a long enough timeline, um, you know, just a caterpillar walking down the street, I don't think they do that, uh, you know, and opposed to climbing up a tree, that could have an effect on lots of things, and you just don't know what that is. I just think it's this fascinating idea to think about. Um, you know, but then of course, like I said, if you look at the bigger picture, if you look at your life, if you make a choice to go to that college or that college or something, uh, you know, that is going to have a huge effect, very obvious effect on the rest of your life. You meet people at school. Um, and if you went to a different school, you would meet a whole different group of people and take different classes and have different teachers. And your life would take a completely different course. Even if you're studying the same thing, uh, you, your life will be different. And there's no way to know what, what that is. It's just fascinating to me. I have talked way too much. Thank you very much for listening. And until next time, this is Spencer Dispensing Information. Goodbye.